All right, hey guys, how are we? Welcome to uh, episode six of my tour to the USA, and it is in fact the night before uh, because I'm about to do the uh, ghost tour of Gettysburg. So I'm not quite sure what it involves and what ghosts there are, but this is, in case you didn't know, the uh, the site of the bloodiest battle of the Civil War back in 1863 and um, July 1st to July 3rd and uh, so I'm doing the battlefield uh, tour tomorrow um, so a little bit later in this episode but as I said I'm here the night before I've just had a lovely dinner at the local pub the uh, it's a beautiful night the, the bands are playing you can probably hear them in the background looking at the American flag in the center of the roundabout here in town and just the history here it is amazing I can't wait to do the tour tomorrow and go to the museum and all that sort of stuff um, I'm looking at the moment I'm actually standing out the front behind me there is a David Wills house that is actually where uh, Abraham Lincoln uh, put the finishing touches on the Gettysburg address so talk about history there it is um, and uh, crossroad at the Hotel Gettysburg, the one I'm in, the, the, uh, the inn at Lincoln Square, just amazing, the, the history and architecture and the buildings here is just amazing. So it really does feel like you're, you're back in time. So about uh, 15 minutes before we have to meet for the ghost tour. Uh, let's see what we can get up to. This is the Hotel Gettysburg. And this building was actually here during the battle, except for the top two floors. During the battle, some kids actually get up on the roof of that building and they watched the battle from up there. Where the hell were their parents, right? Now after the battle was over, this place was used as a field hospital. You can imagine all the wounded soldiers and I mean, you know, very ornate old theaters with the balconies and everything. And this is where the people back then used to go to kind of watch like an old silent movie or a vaudeville act. And this is where the people in town have been coming to watch their movies all over the years. Now they also had some movie premieres here. They premiered the movie Gettysburg here. You can imagine what that looked like, right? All the people all gathered around, the limos pulling up right there, the stars walking out, right down that red carpet right here. Well, that was interesting. Uh, not normally my sort of thing, but I thought, oh, well, we're here, why not? <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was interesting. A lot of, I'm not really a ghost person, but it was good to sort of hear a lot of the stories about the war and different, um, uh, personalities. Um, not so keen to hear that apparently uh, the hotel or the inn I'm staying at is supposed to be haunted. <laughs> so we'll see how we go tonight. But uh, no, it was good just to um, fill in a few hours. Um, it gives me just a little bit more history uh, to look at for tomorrow. So looking forward to the, the battlefield. Um, so uh, it's off to bed tonight or right now and uh, gearing up for a big day tomorrow on the the uh, battlefield of Gettysburg. All right, it is the morning after, officially day number six, and uh, I'm just about to make my way up to the museum. Oh, sorry, the Gettysburg Museum of History. Now, I've seen this on YouTube a fair bit. Um, one of my favourite channels is the History Underground. He goes all over the world with uh, World War II, um, uh, obviously here in Gettysburg, so all over the place. So um, it's free to get in. So I'm looking forward to go up there and have a look. I've got all sorts of great stuff there. Obviously a lot, including the Civil War, uh, but a lot of other stuff as well. So uh, it's about... 10 to 11 here in the morning so it opens at 11 so I'm just going to drive up there now um, have a look around town some some really cool stuff to see before uh, going out to the Gettysburg battlefield uh, at about two o'clock today and then heading to to Washington so I'll uh, go a bit of a stroll it's a nice day and uh, check out the sites of Gettysburg okay quickly showed this yesterday in the video this is uh, Abraham Lincoln and a tourist Apparently, it's based on Perry Como, who was a big star back in the 60s, I think, 50s or 60s. But there is Abraham Lincoln pointing towards the David Wills House. Now, the David Wills House is probably the most famous house in Gettysburg. And the reason why is that Abraham Lincoln 
uh, was a guest here on November 18 and 19, 1863. Uh, um, so uh, he completed it and put the finishing touches on the Gettysburg Address and the world famous there address um, of the people by the people and for the people I think it was so that's him pointing towards where he did the, uh, the put the finishing touches on his speech and we'll see where he did that speech later today and check out up there you probably can't see it but this is the Farnsworth house and that is littered with bullet holes in the side of the wall there Let's see if we can get a closer look the wall there, line up the wall. So we're right in line of all the soldiers coming up this street right here, Baltimore Street. All right. Can't beat the word or No. This is all uniforms for the reenactments that take place every weekend. This is, uh, this is the Confederate side. And the Union side. Wow, that's great. Guns there, replicas obviously. Very cool. Right, so this is actually the Maryland Sutler House, by the way. And uh, look at that. Pretty cool. Civil War building, July 18th today. I've been looking forward to seeing this place. I've seen it all over YouTube, the Gettysburg Museum of History. And as, as you can see, they're free, even better. There it is there. Check it out too on YouTube, History Traveller. Awesome videos about the war. from the war about the road there. Amazing. I think this is from American Pickers actually, but very cool. And it's not all Gettysburg stuff here either. It's uh, World War Two. So much stuff. Nazis, helmets and hats. Just amazing how they get hold of all this stuff. Always fascinated by World War II stuff. Hope we'll I never get there again. But I was that pumped up. That, uh, I don't know how else to explain it. But as that pumped up, that they were moving slow, and I was normal, and my memory. Check this out. The flag was folded in the pocket of a Japanese soldier. He was shot and killed by a US Marine. The bullet hole and blood stains are visible. Wow. Now oh, 
that's something you don't see every day. Or you ever want to see every day, or any day. A great I have to show this one. Look at that. That is a rifle found in the ocean near Omaha Beach, Normandy, France. And here is the JFK room, highlighted by one of his suits, worn between 1955 and 1960. And there's lots of other stuff. And if you're a Marilyn Monroe fan, there is her bra. Not sure why it's in the JFK room, but I think you probably know why. <laughs> now you probably can't see it there, but that is some leather upholstery from the limousine in which he was driving when he was assassinated, and it is stained with his blood. Not sure if you can see it there, but that is an amazing artifact. There is a plaster cast of Abraham Lincoln's head or his face. That was amazing. I know it's probably not for everyone, all the, uh, the museums and artifacts and that sort of stuff, but I tell you what, if you are a war buff, holy shit. So that was it's mainly the, uh, obviously the Civil War, but uh, you would have seen there lots of stuff for World War II. Um, the JFK room just had a few sort of basic sort of stuff in it, but the uh, the World War II and the, the Civil War room is just amazing. And to think that it's free, I did leave a, just a, a donation there because uh, that's what they sort of rely on. But wow, well, um, I've seen as I said, I've seen a lot of it on YouTube, different um, uh, different things. Plus also uh, on American Pickers, they take all their stuff there that's related to the war there to be appraised. Um, but uh, again, if you're in the area and you're a war buff, check it out. Now before I take the Gettysburg tour, I just wanted to show this building here. We're at the Seminary Ridge Museum. Now I haven't got enough time to go inside, but this building here is a major part in the, uh, the day one happenings of the Civil War, well not the Civil War itself, but the Gettysburg part of it. Now up there, now I'm not going to pretend to be a history buff or Gettysburg uh, expert or anything, but up in the tower there is where um, all the generals, including I think it's General Buford, if you're a Gettysburg uh, expert, please don't come at me if that's wrong, but I think it's, it was General Buford, played by Sam Elliott in the movie, and uh, they stood up the top of that tower there looking down this way to the battlefield, which are down further and uh, plotted what they were going to do um, in the war that neither side planned to to uh, happen here but this is where they met and uh, three days of the bloodiest battle of the war July 1 July 3rd now this is just some of what they would have been surveying up from that tower lots of land out here that's what they would have been looking at for all the Confederate troops coming up from the south. up from the south they can't even find a general to lead the army general hooker was in charge of the army by default uh, lincoln has tried to force general reynolds to take command of the united states army second in command of the army but he doesn't want command and all the other generals don't want command either they tell lincoln we don't all right well that is the end of the bus tour you're probably wondering why i didn't really post anything with that it's because i'm very very unfulfilled we got off the bus twice um, even though the guide was fantastic, he knew so much about it. You could tell he'd been uh, on this, well, done this tour a million times. 
He spoke 100 miles an hour. I couldn't really take him what he was saying. And uh, I was just rushed and forced and um, yeah, I didn't really get much out of it. So we are going back. I've got uh, the car here. I've got my guide, my map. We've got about two to two and a half hours to uh, have a look before the, the park closes. Uh, and I'm gonna go back and do it on my own, at my own pace and see a lot of the stuff that we just didn't get out and see. It's, it's, it's uh, one thing to look on a bus that's out the window, but I want to get out and experience it uh, firsthand. So here, let's go back. All right, first stop. Well, first actually I've got to say how great it is to be out in the bloody fresh air after being cooped up on a bus for two hours with nothing, uh, or air conditioning barely working and cabin fever. But anyway, this is General Lee's headquarters. Now, General Lee was the leader of the Confederate Army. So uh, I'll just read a little bit there what he says. Um, After driving Union troops through Gettysburg, Lee established his headquarters here at the Mary Thompson House late that afternoon. For the next three days, this area was a flurry of activity. Couriers came and went delivering news and orders. Medical staff and civilians tended to, uh, to wounded soldiers in Mary Thompson's yard and cannoneers established an artillery line just behind us here. So this is the house where General Lee set up his uh, little base there. And these are just some of the statues that are just everywhere around the park. Just amazing. Or oh, sometimes even in the bushes. So this one is uh, the 1st Iron Brig 1st Division 1st Corps. So it's just some of them are just to recognise the actual uh, division or it might have been that have been serving in this area. But um, yeah, things like or statues like these are, are everywhere uh, around the, uh, the the national park. Oh, how cool is this statue? And this is what's his name there? It's James Samuel Samuel Wadsworth. So that bit of uh, um, cutting there with the uh, fence barricades there uh, is where. Uh, Confederates crushed the Union line, sending what's it say, sending the surviving Federal streaming back uh, to town, which is that way. And then they counterattacked uh, and forced the uh, Southerners back. So this was on the first day of battle, July 1st, 1863. And I'm just on my way up to a Little Round Top. Um, no car parks up there, it's absolutely full, even though it's only five o'clock in the afternoon. So I'm uh, hightailing it back up there. But um, this was where one of the major battles was fought on July 2nd, 1863. Uh, I think there was 5,000 troops involved in it. A thousand of them died. Um, so again, I don't profess to be an expert on all this stuff, but um, I just sort of read a little bit there, but it's, it's one of the uh, major lookouts as well of, and you'll see when we get up there the view, but one of the major um, points are all after for the higher ground uh, to give them adv the uh, advantage in the war. And you'll see it when you, when you look over the, what the, uh, the generals are looking over. And uh, yeah, as I said, one of the most famous battles within probably the famous battle of the Civil War. So... Uh, Nice little walking trail we got up here, and a few monuments on the way as well. Okay, this guy here is General G. K. Warren. Now he's standing up on the rocks there because he was sent by the General Meade, the commander of the Union Army, to survey this area here, which is Little Round Top. And to his horror, when he got here, he, when he was looking down, discovered it was undefended. And this is what they're all after, the higher ground, to get the advantage in the war. And he discovered that the Confederate Army was on their way. And he had to gather the troops to defend it. And then the battle ensued. And this is what you'll see everywhere around the park. Cannon still set up. Not sure though exactly where they were they've been put, but these are authentic cannons. And 
as I said, there are stacks of them all around the park. And apparently they were, well, a lot of them are green at the moment, but apparently they were nice bright bronze back in the day. And the weather over the years has turned them green. But uh, how cool is that? You know, the one thing that does strike me though, um, it's the biggest question I keep thinking of, as much as I love looking at, at all the Civil War stuff, is how does probably the most civilised country in the world at the time, probably apart from England, go to war with itself? The North versus the South. Now I know in history lots of countries have had civil wars, I get that, but none have been as civilised, I suppose, or a, a world superpower like the USA. And if you don't actually know about the, the Civil War, it was pretty much the 11 southern states um, wanted to secede from the other states and become the Confederate States of America. And then the Union up north, of course, wanted to keep it the United States of America and didn't, um, didn't accept what the South wanted to do and under um, no means or no terms, whatever it might be, were they going to be allowed to leave uh, the rest of the country. So I know it's, uh, it's been said it's, it's more about the uh, slavery issue. That was sort of a byproduct from what I'm gathering, from the information I've sort of gotten, the people I've spoken to and the experts and uh, all that sort of stuff. And I'm by no means an expert, don't get me wrong. But the common theme I've, I've got is, uh, and I always thought it was because of slavery. Uh, I'm sure that was obviously a, a part of what Abraham Lincoln was trying to do eventually, but I think that came a couple of years after the Civil War or this part of the war. But um, apparently it was more about just stopping the Confederate states from leaving uh, and fracturing the rest of the, uh, the country. So again, I'm not professing to, to know everything. I'm just sort of making assessments and gathering as much information as I can. So that's what I've uh, sort of uh, gathered. But yeah, as I said, how, how does a country so, um, uh, well, allegedly so civilized in the USA go toward this? It's one of those, it's exactly one of those only in America type of things. Yes, we all have, we've all had disagreements over the years in history, but the north of a country going to war with the south of the country. Uh, and look, when you think about it, not much has changed. Even this, this day and age, we are pretty much in a civil war at the moment. North versus south, red versus blue. That's still going on, just not on the battlefields. It is going on in the battlefields of everyone's lounge rooms at the moment and on their computers. That's where it's happening. And on social media, that's where it's happening at the moment. Um, and it's probably just as, as vicious as it always has. It's just being waged with keypads rather than uh, weapons. So, um, and it is quite um, volatile over here at the moment. Where I'm at the moment, um, it's more Trump country, but closer to uh, Philadelphia and the outskirts is more Democrat country, but it is on, don't worry about that. And there's no in between. There's no grey, you're red or you are blue. And they are very passionate about it. But anyway, that's a different conversation. But just food for thought. We'll head back down to the car now. Of course, when I left Little Round Top, there was about 15 car parks out the front. But that's all good. It's a beautiful day. Uh, the trail's nice and um, nice and shady and cool. So uh, we'll jump in the car and see what else we can find before heading off to Washington. Check out this guy. Lieutenant Winfield Hancock as a Union General. Wow. So he was overseeing. He sat here and he gave the order for a lot of his men. I think he had about a thousand here to charge. Only a couple of hundred survived. And this is what I was talking about with the cannons turning green. But these are scattered all over the place in the National Park. But even have a look over there with the, the fences. Actually they're over here as well. Look at the way they've done it. Still set up like it was 
back in 1863. And all these fields would have just been running red with blood. Pretty amazing. Okay, this is the Pennsylvania Memorial. Unbelievable. So up there is Abraham Lincoln. This was made in honour of all the people from Pennsylvania that fought in the war. All the majors and generals and all that up there. Beautiful. And even better, you can actually walk out on top of this thing. This is probably one of the most um, prolific battles that they had. This is called Pickett's Charge and General Pickett and his uh, Confederate soldiers stormed the Union soldiers that were here. 150 cannons and they bombarded here the Union return fire with their own 150 or whatever it is cannons and for a couple of hours they just went at it and the death toll was absolutely horrific but at the end of it all um at the eventual the end of the war this is just something i want you to see here this is actually a photo taken in 1938 so 75 years after the battle and there's confederate and union soldiers shaking hands over the ridge that is just over here Okay, well that is a wrap for Gettysburg. Actually, what's one thing on that photo I just showed you? Is that, <laughs> again, one of those only American moments you have two armies that have absolutely pulverized each other. Hundreds of thousands of people that have been killed and they've got to then go back to being neighbors. Um, it's, it's shaking the hand over the fence there, the gray uniforms with the blue uniform. And um, it's just amazing. I think they've got to almost go back to normal. And also to think that, what, 160 years later, and I don't think the rift has actually been mended. As I said before, there is still that, well, I said red versus blue, but still grey versus blue mentality um, of people here. But uh, if ever um, had a picture more ironic than that, than those, the Confederate and Union soldiers shaking hands 75 years later probably through gritted teeth so anyway all right so that is it uh, i know firstly i know this is not for everyone um, but uh I'm, i've just uh, got this fascination with american history good and bad and uh, i'm really glad that i've been to the to the fields of uh Gettys, gettysburg and again if you uh ever if you're ever in the neighborhood I've said that a few times in this in this video uh, in these videos then get to Gettysburg. Do your research first. That's probably one thing I will say. Do your, some research on it first so you sort of know what you're looking for and uh, come here and experience for yourself because it, it is just amazing to think of what actually happened on these fields here. Just amazing. So anyway, into the car and uh, let's head to Washington.